Next up, Ryu. Sit. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, can everybody hear me uh, okay in the back? Yeah. <laughs> then I'll speak up like this, okay? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'm going to give a talk about reuse. I'm uh, Linus. Uh, I work for the Free Software Foundation Europe um, as a sysadmin, and I'm also uh, one of the maintainers of the reuse tool. Um, and so this tool, um, so since this is the SBOM dev room, um, I need to relate what we do with reuse uh, to SBOM somehow. And I think the catchphrase, or what I want you to take away from this uh, presentation today, is that um, if you want to have nice SBOM uh, downstream, uh, you should push everybody to use reuse uh, upstream, because it makes everything else much, much easier. Or just, yeah, how reuse makes everybody's life a bit easier. Um, so typically, with uh, free and open source software, you have um, compliance issues when it comes to license and copyright. Um, there's uh, missing information about license and copyright holders um, of your own code um, and of third-party code that you might use in your application. Um, there's license ambiguity. Um, so, for example, if there's just it says GPL, but you don't know which version. Um, and often, when there's somebody taking the time to, to put all the information there, it's stored in a, in a silo, and it's not actually in the, where the code is. Um, and often, another thing is that uh, when you change something um, in the code, you should, or you have a new contributor coming on, then you need to change everything again. Developers also need a lot of training if there's custom solutions, um, and there might also be um, conflicting um, compliance practices. So we thought, like, why can't we solve these issues um, here? Um, up the stream, uh, so that when the water flows down uh, to everybody else who's consuming license and copyright information of, of uh, source code has uh, just an, an easier time um, digesting them. So reuse um, is based on a couple of principles. Um, it should be easy for copyright um, and licensing information. Um, everybody should be able to find this easily, um, so it should be in the file that it applies to, um, if that's possible. Like, of course, with a binary file, that's not possible. But if it's plain text, that's possible, and then should go in there. Um, silos uh, should be avoided. And all the licensing copyright information should be stored in the repo. Um, and that info should be readable by humans and machines alike. Um, we also do not want to re reinvent the wheel if we don't have to. So uh, yeah, we try to be compatible, as compatible as possible. Um, and also. Um, Licensing should be uh, easy and fun. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so we try to, um, we try to do that. Um, you can decide whether we, we manage, but uh, at least we try. So there's three simple steps to using reuse. First, you choose um, and provide the license. Um, reuse does it uh, with a nice, nice little dialogue for you when, you when you start it up the first time. I can show you later. Um, then you add copyright and licensing information, preferably to every file. And then we have a range of tooling that allows you to confirm this reuse compliance, either in a pre-commit hook, in CI, and of course locally on your machine. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll go through this quick. Um, maybe just a quick show of hands. Who has heard of reuse before? OK, so I'm preaching to the choir. Uh, who has used it before? <laughs> okay, so I, yeah, I'll, so I'll, I'll, I'll go through this um, rather quickly. Um, one thing that we do is we save license text in a licenses directory. Um, I'll make a quick shout out to GitHub later about um, this. Then um, reuse names uh, them after the SPDX license identifier, and then they're stored in the licenses rep repository. Um, then the copyright and license information is added to every file. Um, then it, it looks roughly like that. Um, and then the, if you have uncommentable files, like uh, binary files, uh, images, um, or executables, or whatever, um, then we, you can do a separate license file, which is a plain text file, uh, which refers back to that uh, uncommentable file, which then contains this, uh, this information. 
and there's uh, also you can use a um, dep5 file in uh, .reuse uh, directory. This is about to change soon, hopefully, because we are going to develop our own reuse YAML, which sits at the root of the repository, um, where you can um, define this uh, type of information for uncommentable files or for whole directories much easier than with dep5. Um, and then the third step is you confirm that you're actually compliant with, uh, with reuse. What are the components um, of, the, of reuse? Uh, so one thing is uh, a spec where we pretty clearly uh, try to state um, how licensing information and copyright information should be added to source code. Then uh, there's a helper tool, um, the, the reuse uh, tool, the reuse CLI tool. CLI tool. Then there's um, a very good tutorial on FAQ that you can look into um, to yeah, answer very basic questions about licensing, but also some advanced stuff. And then there's an API where you can um, sign up your project and then get a nice badge. Who doesn't like badges? Um, so I've already uh, said that we store the licenses in a um, licenses directory. So the UI for, of GitHub, for example, still doesn't pick that up properly. That would be very cool if that happens. It's not very hard. Um, and um, yeah, the rest of that, I'll, in the interest of time, I'll, I'll skip over that. So um, now I'll, I'll just show you um, really, really quick, because I have five minutes left, I think, um, that uh, how, this, how this works, how this looks in practice. Um, so here is the, is the text size okay for everybody in the back? Yeah. So here I'm in a, in a non-compliant um, repo. Um, and I can run reuse lint to confirm that I'm not compliant. I have six files in this repo, and none of them have any copyright or licensing information. That's not cool. So um, I can just run reuse in it. Um, and now I am, I'm asked to provide licenses. So usually I um, use something like CCO um, 1.0 for um, yeah, just configuration files and, and stuff like that. Um, then uh, we could, uh, let's add GPL. Um, and then, did you mean, ah, yeah, GPL. And then just call that example. Uh, that doesn't matter. Um, so now we see it downloaded the licenses and it created a depth file file for us. Of, like I said, this will change. Um, and now I can, I can start adding um, license information to certain files. So for example, now I can uh, add the license uh, CC0 to my git ignore file, for example. I can re run reuse lint to see what's changed. And I see now I have one file uh, with correct copyright information. And I could now continue doing that for for the rest of the files, but um, I hope this, uh, you get the idea that it, it's, a, it's, a very, it's a tool that really simplifies this process. And then you can, you can put the reuse lint checks in your pre-commit hooks. Um, they're, it's, they're very terse. They basically um, look like this. Oh, this is a, that's all you have to do, and then run pre-commit install, and then before you commit, it does the, the reuse lint check. Um, so it's, it's very, very uh, simple. It's very straightforward. Um, I had to jump through this a little bit because I don't have that much time, I just realized. Um, so the ongoing development is, of course, the tool. And um, it's all uh, free and open source. Um, and so you can contribute as much as you like. Um, and we are ha very happy about everybody who contributes. Um, and then there's an API, which is all fully, uh, fully open source and free software. Um, we have a specification, uh, which will be extended with reuse YAML uh, really, really soon. Um, we hope that we can do some better integration, especially with Git forages in the, in the future, that the UI shows you which licenses you have in the repository right away. Um, and we want to spread, and you can, of course, help us with that. So who uses reuse? At the moment, we have uh, over 1,400 projects signed up to, uh, to, uh, that use our API. Um, that have cumulatively more than 80,000 stars on GitHub. Um, then there's uh, stuff that lives on other forages, like KDE and the framework that uses reuse. 
Um, Curl um, became Rios compliant as Weblate, a really cool translation product that re recently became Rios compliant. Um, GNU Health Project, which is an awesome project. The Corona Van app in Germany. Um, and the Linux kernel is trying to become Rios compliant. It will take a time, it will take a while. Um, and <laughs> um, yeah, so feel free to check this. Uh, I will upload the slides and then you have all the links. Um, if you want to um, participate, sign up to the mailing list, uh, ask questions, uh, create issues, um, make one of your own projects reuse compliant. It's really easy. Um, integrate reuse into your community and comp um, compliance policies. Um, help others adopt reuse. Um, here I linked the developer section of the website, which is really um, the best way to get started really, really quickly. And yeah, I, I don't know. Do I have time for questions? Not um, two minutes. Two minutes. Maybe I can take one. I also just a quick note. Uh, Carmen is here. Um, she's the main uh, one of the main creators of uh, Reuse. Um, so we'll also be happy to answer questions afterwards. Um, I'll take one now. What does bad license mean in the Olympics? <coughs> a bad license? Yes, the literature shows in the header. The first one is bad licenses, and I think. Ah, yeah, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not an SPDX license. Huh? <laughs> ah, what, what does bad license mean? And it, it means that uh, it's not an actual SPDX license. Um, yeah, but just on, yeah. How to handle custom licenses? Yes. Um, I don't think we handle them at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, if you can make a custom license, license ref. Ah, OK. Yeah, yeah, so you can make a custom uh, license ref. Uh, within SPD, so so that SPDX allows you to do that, and then the reuse tool follows that. Yeah, okay. sorry, only fifteen minutes. <laughs> sorry.